Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in late 2009, Intel released their first Core i5 processor, which coincidentally was the first quad core i5 CPU to be made available. For those of you not familiar with first generation i5 chips, there were a few hyper-threaded dual cores available too. While those may struggle a little more in 2020, the i5-750, which I have right here, Look at that special effect, I don't know why Hollywood hasn't taken me on as a VFX artist. Anyway, the i5-750 has four cores and four threads, can be found for less than a tenner, and there are plenty of used sockets, so I was going to say 775, 1156 motherboards available. Boards like the Gigabyte GA-H55M UD2H, which doesn't tend to cost an arm and a leg, yet offers support for overclocking, something that may really help this chip out these days. For example, 205 MHz base clock with a multiplier of 20 and 1.35 volts means that the normally 2.66 GHz chip should run stable at 4.1, but it all depends on the board and how lucky you get with your CPU. Before the tests, it's worth noting that the 1156-based Xeons are also worth considering. The X3430, for example, is pretty much the equivalent of an i5-750, so it should do equally as well, and can be found cheaper in most cases. There's also the matter of the X3440, which is also cheaper, and has 8 threads. In fact, why am I even reviewing the i5? It's more expensive than the Xeons and only has 4 threads, I mean, surely it's not worth it. This is the second time this week I've bought the wrong CPU. I'm still mad about the Ryzen 3 1200 from the last video. You know what, I quit. Forget the whole thing. I'm off. Okay, I'm only joking for now. I'm a big fan of the first generation Core i series. I always have been. To be honest, I think they're quite magical. So enough talk, let's get into some numbers. Now today, we're strictly focusing on gaming for this old school chip. The i5-750 supports all the relevant instructions so that you don't need to worry about certain titles starting up. This is something that may differ with the 2-core i5-650, though the hyper-threading should prevent unwanted black screens and crashes in those games that don't support dual cores. First up we have Red Dead Redemption 2. A whole heap of rooting tooting cowboy shooting is no match for the i5-750 here. Well actually it sort of is. Towns like Valentine will have a detrimental effect on frame rate, yet wandering around in the wilderness doing some fishing and generally taking a gentle stroll through the five fictional states will mean a fairly solid frame rate. Tweaking the settings further will mean different frame rates and it all depends on the graphics card that you're using. The Outer Worlds was also a mixed bag. Sometimes, and mainly outside of towns once again, the frame rate would hold steady, yet I certainly noticed a difference in Edgewater, for example. To work out the average, I combined the figures from both in and outside of town, but it's not unplayable to say the least. Turning the resolution up even higher may benefit the CPU, as the GPU will be put to work a little harder. This was effective with the Core 2 Duo that we tested with this game a while back. Doom Eternal doesn't seem to care about CPUs, it's fairly well optimised. Actually, saying it doesn't care is probably a bit too far, but a decent graphics card will serve you better here. This is definitely a fun game to play when you just want to blast your way through some enemies and not have to think too much. It's therapeutic in a way. There will definitely be some moments of slowdown but the average held firm throughout my half hour gameplay period using the high settings. Now Dota 2 isn't exactly the most demanding title available, but it is still very popular even today, and a few of you have asked me to add it back into the benchmark roster. GTA 5 will be making a reappearance, and I'm currently, spare of thought for my internet service provider, downloading Warzone, so we should have that ready for benchmarking in about two to three centuries. Games like Dota will run fine, and there's no need to worry about frame drops. This was a bot match, for the sake of my would-be teammates, but the figures were taken from an online game. Now PUBG is getting on a bit age-wise now, but it's still being updated and it's certainly very popular even to this day, so it's definitely worth having a look at it with this near 11-year-old processor. Once again, no problems here, but you may notice a few drops, so I guess there are some problems here. These issues are reflected by the 1% low. It's not ideal for competitive play, I'll admit, but I have certainly experienced worse. The frame rate was taken from a single match on this map, 
so another map may differ FPS wise. Either way, you should at least see a playable experience. Also remember that the stock CPU might give you totally different results too. If you don't have it overclocked, then it could mean a totally different set of results. After all, the 4 GHz overclock is probably helping quite a bit in some CPU intensive situations. Finally, if you can make out this dark mess on your screen, then you'll probably be able to see Rust being played fairly well, albeit at reduced 1080p settings. 64 was the average with a respectable 1% low to boot, so fans of this title and owners of a first gen i5 should have little trouble if you don't mind some sacrifices visually. All in all, not a bad set of results, but let's summarise and talk about what you could buy instead. Right, so Intel's Core i5 first generation range. Now, who should buy one of these CPUs? Well, they're cheap, so if you're looking for something on a budget, then it may be suited to you. Now, there are a few things to consider. The i5-750 is four cores, uh, it has four threads, so immediately it is a better choice than, say, the i5-650, which has two cores and four threads. That's not to say that that isn't still a capable and a little bit cheaper CPU even in 2020, but I'll have to retest that at some point. The good thing about these CPUs, I can speak for the UK on this basis, is that there are a lot of 1156 motherboards for them on places like eBay, used boards that really don't cost too much. There are also a lot of Intel branded boards. Those tend to be the cheapest. I've seen them going for about 25, 30 pounds. They come with the back plate and if you're lucky, even a CPU cooler as well. Now the massive elephant in the room, in fact the whole zoo or the whole savanna of elephants in the room is the Xeon range. Now we have looked at Xeons before for example, the X3430, that's a four core, four threaded CPU, pretty much identical to the i5 in terms of performance. That is cheaper, that will cost you a little bit less. Again, I can speak only mainly for the UK here, but that is another decent option and will work with most 1156 boards as well. The X3440 is where things start to get a little more impressive. For what is less than the i5-750, for some reason, you can get four cores and eight threads. Now, it may not be as good of an overclocker, but you will get better performance based on the fact that it has eight threads. That will certainly help out in some of those CPU-intensive games. Games that I didn't feature today, you know, such as Battlefield 5, for example, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, those are two examples of games that can really push a CPU, a four-core CPU, to its absolute limit. So having those eight threads may really help out indeed. Even in some games like PUBG, which can be quite CPU intensive, that may also help. And the fact that they are cheaper, as I said before, does make me uh, hesitate in, rely in uh, recommending the i5-750 CPU. We must also, though, consider the next generation up, the second generation i5s, because again, 1155 motherboards can be found at a pretty decent price. Again, you have that DDR3 support, and the prices seem to be dropping with those too. Most of those, if not all of those, in fact, are four cores and four threads once again, but the 1155 platform is slightly newer. It gives you a little bit of an upgrade path to an 1155 8-threaded i7 if you wanted to go that way and the price of those are dropping as well considering the launch of the new Ryzen CPUs I have seen older Intel and AMD CPUs dropping in price but they are still all over the used market for anyone looking to build something relatively well priced. Oh my goodness that van was doing about 120 miles an hour down this 20 miles an hour road. What? <laughs> The more competition we get in terms of new hardware, the cheaper, older, used parts seem to get. It's just that it can make it harder to recommend some of these used parts, these first and second gens i5s. For example, AMD's older chips are even harder to recommend now as well, the FX series. But remaining on point with the i5s here, the first generation chips are still cheap when you can find them. And they may make someone very happy in terms of gaming performance, though at the end of the day, if you're thinking about an i5, strongly consider an old Xeon instead. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed 
if you did leave a like on it down below leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one